All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another fun mod, this time in the form of the Kerbal Galaxy mod, being made by forum user rtomka 15 and what this particular planet pack adds into the game is not only more planets, but more solar systems. And that, that is why I'm wanting to look at it. Now, I've said in the past, and actually I believe on the last planet pack that we looked at, I'm personally not a huge fan of planet packs. I prefer parts over planets, but the fact that this adds in additional solar systems, not just planets, that's what drew me to this. I am intrigued to no end by the possibility of having additional star systems, so let's just head right into the tracking station and take a look at what it has on offer. Now, first thing you may notice, we have clouds on Kerbin here. That is because this mod does come pre-packaged with the EVE mod, which is environmental visual enhancements, which adds things like clouds to your atmospheric planets. So that is a cool little addition. It really makes some of the new planets added in by this mod. It really makes them pop. It's very cool. But yes, we start with our planet. And if we zoom out, you will notice we have our same solar system as always complete with the unknown object asteroids that you have to go and find but if we continue to zoom out there are other solar systems five in total newly added and they all orbit around a black hole in the center which I don't think you can actually click on I'm oh oh no focus Sun yes that <laughs> So it's still labeled as sun, huh? Technically, it is supposed to be a black hole now that all of these star systems orbit around. And let's just go through each of these star systems one by one. The first one closest to the black hole is the Polaris system, a hot, bright star nearing the end of its life. Rumors about that... It was once very much like Kerbal before it flared up and began to die. Oh, how sad. And if we zoom in, the Polaris is a white star and has, if we zoom in a bit more, yes, I just wanted to double check and make sure there wasn't anything really close. Two planets here, the first of which is Pandora, which if we zoom right on in, oh boy, my mouse wheel is going to hate me after this episode. A lot of scrolling in and out. We have this very interesting greenish yellow planet, which kind of looks like Eve, but made green. Huh, I wonder if it is the same height map. I'm not entirely sure on that, but we seem to have some sort of cool hurricane off the coast there. Very awesome. Very awesome indeed. Unfortunately, no little flavor text info, but we do have information on it. The radius, area, mass, all of that sort of stuff. Atmosphere, yes, always good. So you do at least have that information. But if we zoom back out and take a gander at the next planet in this system, and last, of course, we have Ryla. Oh boy, back to zooming in. Okay, there we go. And this one is one of my favorites. Because one, not only is it a cool gas giant with a ring, though, is that? That looks like Jupiter. Oh wait, no, I don't see the storm. Interesting. Looks very similar in coloration, though. But what's cool about it is it does have its own ice moon of Hoth, which actually sort of orbits it in between these two lines of the ring, and I really, really like that. That amuses me to no end. And yeah, it's quite a cool little moon here. Again, no flavor text. I would have expected something amusing from Hoth, but oh well, what are you going to do? We still at least do have our parameter info, but if we do zoom out, out and oh god keep going keep it going and there we go next star system we have is nim now this one i don't believe has any planets at all it is purely a brown dwarf that apparently sometime apparently that sometimes passes very close to kerbal kerbal scientists have proven nim to be completely harmless and yes it is just a big brown dwarf star with no planets around it whatsoever but it'd be cool to get a little survey probe around here just to see it would be quite the challenge and it may have planets in the future it is still on the to-do list to add more planets and more star systems as well as a proper black hole effect to the center here so that should be quite intriguing now the third one we have in line is our own star system so we'll skip over that and go to the Aravate system which hold on let me go to my other monitor here real quick 
Ah, yes, this one's supposed to be a red dwarf. Oh, it's also right here on the info, a relatively large red dwarf star. Okay, and it should have two planets in it. We have, well, first let's zoom in on the sun here quite nicely. That is pretty cool. I do like the coloration of it. And then the first planet we have here is Sarah. S Sahara? Oh god, I don't quite know how to pronounce that, but I'm guessing that's as close as I'm going to get. Another kind of yellowish green planet that seems to be a popular color scheme for this uh, this particular planet pack, but it still looks kind of good. I like the sheen to it. It's very nice, very nice indeed. Though it looks relatively flat, but then again, we are massively zoomed out still. It might be quite different when you try to land on it. And then the next planet here is Eden. And if we zoom in here, there we go. It does have atmosphere again, <laughs> and a green color. That definitely does seem to be a running theme. Very cool looking planet though. I really like the cloud cover that it has here. We don't appear to have any oceans of any form, but very nice cratered landscape. Very, very cool indeed. Would probably be quite fun to try and land on, though dear Jebediah, that would be one hell of a long trip. Oh, look at that distance. Oh, boy. The next system we have is Oblock, which is a uh, one of the largest stars known. Oblock is apparently a beautiful blue star, and look at it. It is rather quite gorgeous, though at certain zoom levels, I've noticed it's a little glitchy. Like, hopefully you can see this in the video. It's kind of like flashing in and out in the textures, but if we zoom in, it's perfectly fine. And at farther zoomed out levels, it seems okay as well, but... Kind of in mid-range, we get this weird glitching effect around the exterior of the sun. But nonetheless, three beautiful planets in this system. Uh, the first of which is Aelion, which if we zoom in, a very cool gas giant. Oh god, yeah, that one definitely does use Jupiter's texture, just colored blue. Still though, still quite cool. A very large gas giant, always fun. We then have... There's the next one, Phoenix. I'm guessing is going to be some sort of fiery planet with that name. And I was right. Pools of lava. <laughs> At least that's what I'm assuming those are. Interesting. Interesting indeed. A very kind of cool though. I, I like it. I like the look. Ooh, that's that is big lava ocean. Intriguing. Okay, and then the third and final planet in this particular star system is... Oh, God, keep scrolling out. There we go. Sunflower. What a name after Phoenix. All right. And this particular planet is, again, with that green color that they really seem to like, but a very potmarked, cratered planet. Very cool. I actually really like the look of this. It's just very awesome with its topography. It's just, it's quite interesting to me. Though some oddly shaped craters in it kind of looks like Swiss cheese. Though that has obviously gone bad with the green color. And then last but certainly not least, we have one more star system to look at. And that is, oh god, zoom out more. Uh, Osiris. There we are. And no info on this one over here. But this has one singular planet orbiting it. Well, let's just double check, make sure. Oh, nope, there is another zoomed in quite close. That's why I've been zooming in close to these. Now, this is a very, very tiny, tiny star, but very cool nonetheless. A, I guess that would be, what, a white dwarf? Oh, boy, I don't really know my suns very well. And the first planet that we have around it is Ida, which I'm having problems clicking on. There we go. And... Ooh, that's actually quite nice. I, that's a very beautiful looking planet. Kind of interesting though, this half of the planet seems much smoother than the back half. That is intriguing. And then of course we have the beautiful star right there. And then if we zoom out, we had one more planet in this system, which was Volko, or no wait, Isis. I'm assuming it then has a moon called Olko. Oh God, it has two moons. Ooh, very interesting. So it seems to be another gas giant with a ring. I always loved ring planets. They are quite cool looking. And then we have two moons. The interior one is Roko. Intriguing name and a very intriguing look. Look at that. That is, that is very strange. It's like, it looks almost like something's grown over the top of another planet because we've got like these little crater marks that are, look like something's grown over them. That is... That's somewhat disturbing. 
but quite cool. Awesome, awesome. And then the other planet we had over here, or moon rather, is Volko, which does appear to have an atmosphere. Very cool, very sort of light reddish pink tint to it. Very nice indeed. It kind of... Huh, I may be imagining things, but I don't know. The texturing under the clouds kind of looks like Mars. It could very well be, but it's obscured by the clouds. But you know what? Nonetheless, very cool. We do seem to have some topography that's visible up here. Very, very interesting indeed. And that, well, that is all of the various planets currently in this particular galaxy mod and I just love that we have five new star systems for you to go and explore and try and hopefully not lose your kerbals in the process because I mean dear sweet everything that is just a huge distance to try to get to if you thought Elo was hard to reach try reaching Osiris Oh boy, or Polaris, that would be that would be quite interesting indeed. But let us go and actually take a closer look at the different planets. Now, I had originally built a probe to go out there, but apparently it seems to have been lost in the tracking station. I didn't see it here when I popped in, so perhaps I accidentally reverted to a save file. So I'm gonna bring you guys back once I have put a orb or a probe back into orbit around one of the interesting planets to point out a few more things about this mod. So see you in a sec. All right, so I have sent up my galactic surveyor, which thankfully the design for this little probe was saved, so I didn't have to rebuild it. I just needed to hyper edit it over to Hoth, which I have to say is probably one of my favorite of the celestial bodies added into this particular pack, uh, which is quite cool. Again, it is in the Polaris or Polaris star system here, and it is orbiting around Arela. I guess that is how you say it correctly. And and I've put it into a polar orbit because I wanted to point out something about this planet's pack, which seems to be an issue with many planet packs that I have seen in the fact that if we go to, oh god, oh yes, I have the UI turned off, of course it's not going to. Uh, we have scanned and we can toggle the overlay. And you'll notice that the entire planet, though it does have ore, is just freaking everywhere. It seems to be a common problem with any planet pack. Uh, they don't seem to have biomes down yet, is what I'm assuming the issue is. And so, even though the planet will have ore, it's just going to be flat out everywhere. You're not really going to have pockets of it in certain places. And that seems to be the case with all of the planets. I haven't checked every single one, but I did a spot check of a couple of them. And they all appear to be at about 3.25% average or and just freaking everywhere which hey I mean that's not a huge issue I mean you still have to mine for your fuel but nonetheless it is very fun to actually have the ore in place it would just be nice if it did have it in a more proper sort of biome system which hopefully will come in the future let's turn off that overlay and just take in the beauty of this moon in between two freaking rings of a huge gas giant. That, that is what I love most. This is why I love Hoth. I just find it so cool and intriguing to have a planet floating between these two rings. It's just, it, it makes me happy. It makes me smile, which is a difficult thing for a planet pack to make me do. As I've said many times, I prefer parts over planets. But this view, this view right here is just beautiful and so I can I can see the appeal of planet packs with stuff like this but let us go and visit yet another planet let us go and check out oh what was it Phoenix oh god no not the planet editor we don't want to actually edit the planets themselves let's go to simple eh, for safety's sake oh, no, we should be fine with 100,000 and select Phoenix I believe it was I wanted to see that lava up close so let's select that, and we've blown up. <laughs> so apparently I must be inside the planet or something, so I should have gone further out than 100,000. Um, okay, let's <laughs> fight to launch. There we go. All right, and oh boy, it's going to take us all the way back to Kerbin. That is a long trip to make. Planet, oh god, I keep clicking the planet editor. Orbit editor. 
currently orbiting active vessel there we go let's try Phoenix again and this time though doing like 500,000 ah there we are we didn't blow up this time okay yeah we could have gotten quite a bit closer oh that blue light coming off of that is just gorgeous let's get closer hmm Let's uh, speed up time a bit to try and get into the light. Oh, can't go any faster than this while we're at this altitude, which of course I always could change it. Oh, because we are behind. Oh, there we go. There was the blue sunrise. That is, that is just really beautiful. I, I really do enjoy that. Which, again, is surprising to hear coming from me with my general... I wouldn't say dislike, but just not as much interest in planet packs as I am parts packs. So I guess it's not really lava lakes, that's what I was hoping it was, though it still, but I guess potentially could be, just kind of hard to see with the blue tint kind of making it all brown there, but still, nonetheless, very, very cool little planet. Let's go take a look at, uh, what was another interesting one? Rocco, was that one interesting? Well, let's go take a look. It's just a quick little jaunt over there. Ah, yes, this was another one around a gas giant. Where's the... Where's the planet? <laughs> or moon, rather. Okay, hold on. Map. And... Oh, God, is it that freaking tiny? <laughs> okay, okay, so it should be... Ah, there it is. Found it, finally. <laughs> Oh, yes, this was the one where it looks like things are growing over it. That is just cool. All right, there we go. A bit closer. That is quite a cool little planet. I do enjoy that. Let's... Oh, okay, there we go. Ah, uh, the graphical editor. So much easier than actually trying to fly. Oh, that is quite beautiful up close. And it doesn't quite look as much like it's eating the planet as before. It just looks like maybe a huge asteroid and then a few others hit there. But still, very, very cool. That is just beautiful. Looks like some sparkly almost dust there on the ridge of that crater. That is very cool indeed. A very, very fun pack. And I would definitely say to give this a download, if only for the fact that it adds additional solar systems, so that's just a whole new level of difficulty added on to just traveling to other planets. And it finally gives those like in various faster than light engine mods a real purpose, because you are actually having to travel to other solar systems now, and that is just so very cool. I really love it. I'm going to have a ton of fun messing around with this, and I hope you will too, and as always, if you like to give it a go, you can check it out in the uh, link in the description, and that will take you to the forum post for this. It is still in development. It's only currently per version 0.2. But it's already at a very cool state. They just plan on adding in more star systems, more planets, etc. in the future. And that will just make it all the better. But yes, I do hope that you have enjoyed this mod video today. And of course, that you come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one.